Um, hi everybody, uh, my name is Tess Will. I am the Visitor Services Coordinator at the Tobacco Farm Life Museum in Kenley. Even though I am not there today, <laughs> I'm going to talk to you a little bit more about history um, and specifically medical history, um, which we have a little bit of at the museum. Uh, but today I am going to talk about um, the sick room. So it is exactly what it sounds like. It is a room where someone who is sick um, kind of convalesces and gets better. But um, it's a little more complicated than that. Um, so I'm going to kind of talk about that and then bring in some more local history through the newspapers like we've been doing through clips of time. So. Um, the services of doctors became increasingly more available during the 19th and 20th centuries because more medical schools were being um, founded in the United States and even across the world. But even though more doctors were becoming trained and available, um, often the demand for doctors and their services outnumbered the number of doctors themselves. Um, so most of the time, even if we had a doctor in an area, especially in rural areas, families would tend to treat their sick loved ones at home. Um, and they would have done this with like traditional home remedies or maybe even um, purchasing some at local drugstores or general stores. So most local doctors or country doctors would have been lenient about payment to those patients in rural areas. Um, but often their services were really expensive to the farming family, that typical farming family, who only got paid like once a year when the crop came in. So the typical 19th century farming family probably would have only called the doctor in case of a complicated birth or a very serious injury, which might happen um, while working on the farm. So the sick room became increasingly more popular during the Victorian era um, as a way to manage illness at home. Um, the sick room ideally <laughs> was a whole room where um, one family could um, kind of sequester a loved one for the duration of their illness. Um, it was typically the woman of the house who would have tended to the needs of their sick family member in place of the doctor. Um, unfortunately, most families would have not had that whole spare room um, to kind of designate as the sick room. So this would have become kind of just a bed in a corner of a room um, so your mom or whoever was there could take care of you. So. Um, the sick room emerged during the Victorian era because there was an influx of contagious diseases across the world. So none of these diseases were necessarily new. All these diseases have been along for a very long time. Um, but the rise of the Industrial Revolution actually helped spread disease even quicker than ever before. Um, this is due to... Um, so a lot more people were moving into the cities to get factory jobs. Um, so there's more people to be hosts for certain diseases, but also the Industrial Revolution started a lot more travel. So we have um, trains and steam engines and steamships. Um, so people were going farther than ever before and spreading things. Um, so unfortunately, it took a little bit longer for medicine to kind of catch up to the other advancements of the era. Um, so the sick room was a kind of a necessity for a lot of families. Um, so during the period and even beyond until the 1940s and even today really, um, there were doctors and nurses and other institutions that began to publish literature um, on how to properly manage your sick room. So this um, could have been in books or pamphlets or even newspaper articles, which we'll talk about. Um, and they would talk about the do's and don'ts of the sick room. So these tips didn't just cover medical advice, but included advice on how to manage mental health. Um, though not described that way, um, there was a lot of care that went into the sick room um, in order to keep the patient in high spirits. So we are going to talk about an article that is from the Roanoke Chowan Times. It is um, an article published in January of 1912 entitled, some do's and don'ts for the sick room, um, or some don'ts, just no do's, just don'ts. Um, the article was written by Dr. B.K. Hayes, and it was actually reprinted from the Progressive Farmer, which is in, uh, or was an um, agricultural periodical. So this excerpt um, from the article describes some things not to do while managing the sick room. So, 
Uh, this is don't close up the windows and doors. Let the patient have plenty of fresh air. You may not feel the need of this because you have been out of doors and filled your lungs with air. The patient cannot get out. He is dependent upon the air of the room. Let it be as pure and fresh as that of outside. If the patient is cold, add more covering or apply artificial heat, but never convert a sick room into a closed furnace. So I'll make it really hot. Um, in every sick room, there should be at hand a thermometer, which should not register above 70. So a lot of these um, kind of recommendations were formatted like that. They wanted their patient to have nice fresh air, um, which seems kind of simple. You love a nice breeze on a nice day. And so would someone who is sick. Um, there would have been other recommendations like that. Um, you can check out in the uh, article linked. Um, <laughs> but um, this would have actually continued on um, the practice of the sick room and these literatures being published even up until World War II. So um, during the war, the sick room emerged again kind of in popular consciousness because there were um, a lot less doctors and nurses available because they were all serving overseas on the front lines. Um, and though a lot more of these dangerous diseases were being controlled by public health practices and vaccinations, it wasn't uncommon for children to get sick with what those kind of childhood diseases like measles and mumps and rubella and whooping cough. Um, and those were just kind of a few things that parents would have to care for at home. So to help provide guidance to parents, um, organizations and doctors and nurses would produce um, books and pamphlets in order to kind of inform them on how to care for their families at home. Um, and actually at the museum we have on display one such example. This is a pamphlet that was published in the 1940s by the North Carolina Extension Office and it is entitled Home Care of the Sick. So it is actually in our doctor's exhibit. There's a picture of it um, on the blog post that um, goes along with this if you want to see it or come see it in person when we reopen. But I'm going to read a little excerpt from it. Um, and this one, there's all sorts of instructions how to properly vent the room and how to prop up a patient accordingly, um, to kind of drain fluids and stuff like that. But um, this pamphlet even kind of describes the medicine you should have in your home medicine chest. So um, the supplies needed listed actually comes from the wartime home med medicine chest um, recommendation. So one, there's tannic acid jelly for burns, aspirin for pain, um, aromatic spirits of ammonia for faintness, baking soda for indigestion, a mild laxative such as magnesia, bandages, sterile gauze, adhesive tape, scissors, thermometer, tweezers. So some of those we might not recommend today, but it was actually really cool of them to kind of step-by-step step lay out what would be good in your medicine chest. So even though we no longer refer to the sick room, um, many households, you still care for minor illnesses like the common cold at home. Um, and even today, there's literature being published in different forms um, about how to set up a sick room in a way. So like the CDC has created recommendations and guidelines um, how to take care of um, someone who's been afflicted by COVID-19 at home, which I've li linked in the blog post online if you guys are interested in seeing that and kind of the recommendations of today. Um, and though all the recommendations and medical practices have changed, and I think one thing does stay the same. So we all just want to do what is best for the people that we love, right? So. Thank you guys for coming to this week's Clips of Time. Hopefully we'll see you all when we reopen, okay? So bye.